Corsica. The traveller, arriving from the French mainland, discovers Bastia as day breaks, nestling at the foot of the Corsican peak. All the streets in Bastia point like a finger across the Mediterranean to the island of Elba. Streets that lead directly to the ancient port. Or meander about. Before they encounter the straight avenues of the new section. And before they reach the waterside. A boat trip from Nice on the French Riviera takes about nine hours. And so we begin our magical journey. This romantic, undiscovered land, so near, yet so mysterious, has all the beauty of thick set. European forests, with torrents ringing out in the still air. And the atmosphere of Africa, flooded with dazzling lights. The shimmering sea reflects the caressing rays of the sun. Here, you can journey into the past, from the Ligurians and Etruscans to the Genoese and the Barbary pirates. All Corsica's neighbors struggled to establish their might in this island fortress. For 2,000 years they came, but none of them ever mastered the island. The wave of conquerors chose as their lair the cliffs overlooking the sea. The back country, domain of the Corsicans, were up against the chain of watchtowers, encircling the island, making it a prison. The poet Giovanni sings touchingly of the collar which chafed the proud Corsican spirit. These ancient towers of roughly cut granite run all along the Cape route. The Corsicans themselves deserted the coastline and took refuge in the highlands. There, hidden in the perfumed Mackie, they built impregnable citadels. The greatest of these fortified towns is Corte, the old capital which so arrogantly dominates the plain. 
The atmosphere of its heroic past lingers on in the coolness of its staircase street. Just beyond the immense valley, a solitude of stone enclosed between high mountains, the remote gorges of Santa Regina. Red splashes on the stones mark the climber's trails. Then, the Niolo Valley, wild and beautiful. A gay torrent races along its winding path. heartland of old Corsica, faithful to old customs. In September, open air masses. And religious procession. Attended by barefooted worshippers. Country fairs, where local peasants and mountaineers happily bargain their produce. In Corsica, there remains the sweetness and the misery of age-old feudal ties. Yet, ancient tradition accepts with ease the contribution of modern times, handsome roads and motor cars. Each day, heavy aircraft take to the skies. In the interior, little diesel trains cross the tomb-spangled countryside among the cypress, traditional tree of the dead. Each Corsican longs for burial on the land his family possesses. And here, many aged people return happily home to end their days. Crossing the Visavon forest, we come to Ajaccio. The city suddenly appears, snowy white, in the depths of a blue gulf. Birthplace of Napoleon. The Sanguinary Isles, once a medieval leper colony, are thrashed by the sea wind. The bay is alive with white caps. Blue white mountains studded with bizarre rocks swathed in a light veil of mist. In 
the Zonza Valley, the mist creeps for refuge under the spreading chestnut trees. At the Bavella Pass, the fog weaves its spells at 9,000 feet. The wind whistles through the slim trunks of the great fir trees. A parasol pine, standing apart from the others, spreads open like an umbrella against the wind. Twisted trees like those in Japanese gardens act as standard bearers for the forest host behind. Now and again, one comes across a drove of domestic animals wandering at will. In winter, they'll be guided into valley pens. And from the perfumed mackie, the scent of myrtle and laurel, gilded by the glowing sun, floats across mountain and plain and out over the sea. The summer sun warms and dries. The friction, of, after the brief rains of the equinox, the Mackie recovers its supremacy over the Corsican mountains. September and October are the island's most glorious months. The friendly sun decorates the great brown net stretched along the coast and splashes reflections on the calm waters of Porto Vecchio Bay. Another contrast, the chalky pallor of the great cliffs at Bonifacio. Built on a spur of the mountain, the ancient town hangs over the sea. a single door gave access to the redoubtable citadel. And on the mountain's other side, a corridor carved out by nature into the stone serves as port. On the white mountain, a handful of houses gleams whiter still. While in the bathing cove of Piana below, the September sun warms. A forest of mauve granite figures. Little bells. Animals. Columns. Jagged peaks. And unexpectedly, the Gulf of Porto. The landscape loses its rugged look. Calvi, its mighty fortress, now just a romantic monument. Corsica is beautiful, but its greatest beauty is the sense of escape from the humdrum chores of daily life, from clamorous streets. Here are palm trees and balmy, shaded streets. At Ile Rousse, the gentle sea sweeps colored stones into the powdery beach.
Saint Florent is the epitome of tranquil peace. The Angelus chimes out in Patrimonio's old church tower and echoes over the neighboring vineyard. Young women enjoy gathering the grapes as they have for centuries past. In the forest, the hunters hurry towards the village, heated against the brief, mild winter. Here, the fire crackles. There, the flowers burst forth. A cat dozes in the January sun. In the sea, a few hundred feet down, swimmers leisurely take their morning dip. Corsica, which the wonders of progress have brought within one hour of the mainland. Warm beaches, even in winter. Cool mountains, even in summer. Where hospitality to strangers is a centuries old tradition. The most picturesque, the most individual of all French provinces. 